The product of exponentials method is an alternative way to find forward kinematics of a complicated robot. It uses the axis angle formulation, but it calls instead of the k hat z axis vector, it uses omega hat. The formula is tn0 of theta equals e to the psi hat theta 1 times all this one for every single joint and then times the home configuration. The zero is the base and n is the tip. The zero that's in parentheses is actually just means initial. So when all joint angles are zero, home configuration, time is zero, that kind of thing. And that squiggle next to the thetas is the Greek letter xi, xi. The e to the squiggle hat theta is a four by four link transformation. And so there's one of those that matches to every single link. And then you multiply all those in front times the home configuration and it gives the transformation for the current position of the robot. The first step is to assign coordinate frames, one for the base, one for the tip, and then the link velocities and link positions. You only need to assign coordinate frames for the links whose location in 3D space matters. So if you just wanna know where the tip of the robot is, only assign base and tip. But if you are simulating it, like in MATLAB or something, and you want to see the entire robot, then you'll need to assign a frame for every link. Omega points along the z-axis of the joint. So it is basically just the same as the z-axis vector for revolute joints. For prismatic joints, omega is just zero because there is no rotation. D and theta are, of course, always positive in the z-axis direction. Then assign the p's, which is initial points. The most intuitive place to put these is on the origin of each coordinate frame, but they can be placed anywhere along the z-axis of the joint. Um, they are constant values from the initial configuration, so you don't need to account for joint rotation or translation just write down those coordinates in the robot's initial configuration. The third step is find the home configuration. So the rotation that you must determine from the relative orientations of the base and tip frames. So if the base and the tip frames are in the same orientation, then R is just the identity matrix. However, if the base and the tip frames do not point in the same direction, then you'll have to figure out what is the rotation that gets from the base to the tip and put that inside of the matrix. Then the origin is going to be just the same as P for the tip, as long as you placed P at the origin of that coordinate frame. The fourth step is to calculate the twists. So Xi and Xi hat are the twist coordinates and the twist matrix respectively. You get those from the omega and the p for revolute joints or just from linear velocity for the prismatic joints. Psi is a six by one vector of twist coordinates. So the top half is the linear and the bottom half is the angular motion. So for rotation, it's negative omega cross P and omega. And then for translation, it is just the linear velocity and then zero because there is no rotation. The twist is the hatted vector of the twist coordinates. So this is a four by four matrix. And you'll notice it looks similar um, to the transformation matrices, except in the bottom right corner, it has a zero instead of a one but it also is like a sort of rotation type of thing in the top left, and then a position type of thing in the top right. To find the hat, the hat is a matrix operation where A hat times B is the same as A cross B. So it's like a way to write a cross product with matrices. And A hat is a skew symmetric matrix. So it's not exactly symmetrical, but there are zeros along the main diagonal and sort of inverse symmetrical on the opposite corners of that. 
So these are the formulas of how you would get the hat vectors. The final step is use the product of exponentials formula, e to the psi hat theta. You will have one e to the psi hat theta for each joint. And then finally, you will multiply them all times the initial configuration. To find e to the psi hat theta, um, this is a little bit complicated. So if omega equals zero, it's actually simple. Just basically the identity matrix except with the velocity in the top right. If omega is not zero, so if you do have rotation, then you have Rod Rodriguez's formula, which is the rotation matrix part. So that will end up to be a three by three matrix with this formula below. And then you will have the position part of it being a three by one in this, with this formula. Now, most of the time, this last part of the formula is zero. But if the joint translates and rotates both, that part won't be zero. So if you're writing this in code, then program it in. But if the joint is purely revolute or purely prismatic, then that part goes to zero. Uh, 